clip it on. It's sort of a clip on. Just think of it as a clip on. Like that. Yeah, that'll so probably right. work. Thank you, Kit, for inviting me. And thank you to the cafe for having this series. And uh, thank you to all our friends. And great to meet all these wonderful poets, too. I might have to steal your trick. We'll see. I don't want to throw my whole book over yet. I might, I might have to steal it soon. I'm going to read from my book, Seeking Center. And I'll just take a moment to explain how the book is set up. Um, it's in four sections. And the first section is called Museum Pieces, and it's all poetry that was inspired by visual art, either by being in a gallery or a museum or running into a sculpture garden. The next section is called Heritage, which is a polite way of saying family baggage, because um, <laughs> that's the poems that are the deep, dark, messy family ones. Then there's a series called Music Dream Series, which is a long series of poems that were inspired by both listening to music, anywhere from jazz to classical, which I have a very wide range uh, in tastes, or uh, dreams about music, which I don't think it's unusual that writers and poets um, are blessed with wonderful dreams. And I've had many dreams about music, and I try to put uh, the sounds into words. Big challenge there. And the last section is called In the World, and um, that's poems about being a writer, a mother, an athlete, and a lover. So I'm going to read a little bit from each section, but I'm going to start with um, Music Dream 7, which is out of the Music Dream series. And is it clear? Is everybody, can everybody hear? Okay. Sing to me in sotto voce. Sing rings around me, like a tree's rings show history, the years. Carve and date me as you sing a ring around my planet. I am Saturn, and you are a red, vaporous ring mysteriously encircling. Sing to me a cappella. Your voice hugs my body, weaves its way like a needle, threads through unknown fabric. Your voice calls to me, slices like a ray of light, exposing dark places. Sing to me in a voice deep. Lull me, rock me, call me baby. Take me on your journey of desire and fantasy. Piece me back together with your sharp tongue. Cry out for me in a voice warm as the sun. Sing to me of things you will not say in rhythm and rhyme. Sing to me in three-quarter time. <laughs> That's when poetry and music meet, right? <laughs> and um, the next one, and that poem was uh, published in a small journal out of uh, the Midwest called Eureka. And this next one is called Music Dream 14, and I'm excited about this one because I wrote it a couple of years ago, and it just got accepted into a journal called uh, Fourth River. And the title of the, the subtitle of that journal is called Place, Space, and Identity. And uh, this poem is uh, very much about place. Uh, it takes place in France, and it's not a sleeping dream, it's a daydream. Two bars into an accordion's sad song, and I'm back on that sunny September afternoon on the Loire. There's the same quality of light, viscous, dense, the dark stripes of tree shade, the wine had a scent of peaches and a touch of smoke. We were between places, driving towards something. The air was warm, everything was a brilliant green, but we knew that winter was coming. At Chenonceau, I waved to you down on the bank of the river, from the window in the great hall where Allied forces nursed wounded soldiers during the war. Sadness and happiness roiled like oil and water. Fairy tale chateau along the lazy Loire. Endless wars in the shadow of death. And still, love and wine, warm afternoons, and memory stirred by music.
then we go into um, the heritage section. This isn't one of the darkest, messiest poems, but um, this is called Wedding Poem. And it was a first wedding. <laughs> I say that because my current husband is here, but um, you know, these poems live on their own <laughs> and have their own merit, right? We can't dump the poems just because we dump the people. <laughs> to keep the poems. It's like, thank you, you gave me a great poem. Um, wedding poem. And uh, this poem has been published in a couple of journals, one called Poetica and one called uh, Karen, which is subtitled Jewish Creativity Explored. Wedding poem. In the shadow of the Maya commas, in a field somewhere in time, the dirt beneath us pliant in yielding like a child I stroke your brow, your neck. Rough moss hangs from gnarly branches like the veins and hairs on my grandmother's body. What was the beginning of this ancient tree, roots deep enough to survive even a severe lack of water? Beneath an invisible maypole, our fates are woven. We are nearly ready for our vows. Our roots intertwine and our souls are lit. I know you. I've known you before. In Russia, in Poland, in Germany, in Brooklyn, we were the peasants with the strong love of God. We were the children who prayed by our parents' sides, recited the Shema, glowed in the light of Hanukkah, Shabbos, and Yurtzeit candles. We are blown about by a gentle breeze, nurtured by the soil of each other, celebrate the love that is about rain and the lack of it. Uh, this poem uh, is about my athletic life. I, I ran a very long race, but I have to give a little caveat here. Don't be alarmed. It's a long race, and I am going to call out certain miles, but I won't call out every single mile, so <laughs> you don't have to worry that you will be sitting here listening to the whole marathon. There were just, you know, high points. This one is called The Race, and uh, this one uh, was out in a journal called the Meridian uh, Journal of Contemporary Poetry, and the, the big event there was that Philip Levine wrote the forward to that journal. This is called The Race. Silent morning punctured by the sound of soft souls pounding, rhythm of footfalls, human metronomes, under a canopy of redwoods, we test the edge among strangers. Whose knee will give way, wobbling, whose heart fail. Don't wonder at my worry, I am not young. Mile one, two, three, feet fine, calves no problem, arms swinging. Winged mercuries speed past, others fall behind. Mile four, a lightning. The corporeal veil lifted, my lumbering gait shifts into a gallop. Step, breathe, step, breathe, reduced to muscle, bone, and footstep. Step, breathe, step, breathe. A warm sun breaks the clouds, bears witness to a body freed. Step, breathe, step, breathe. Mile seven, skeletal reprisal, left knee yells. Right femur shouts, mile eight, ache of back harmonizes, howling hamstring. I am a harp constricted by its woody nature, a Stradivarius by two taut strings. I am spirit constrained by vein and tendon, heart pump and lung bellows, the specific curve of an arch fallen. Mile nine, a sort of angel appears. Her sweet voice loosens pain's grip. Paced alongside, she spins a tale of lonely mountain ranger life. From the peak of Mount Lassen, I can see the Cascades, high Nevada desert, rust and ochre colored valleys. The nameless woman's chatter quiets my brooding chorus. I name her friend. The finish line looms as I hurl toward the familiar, out of the woods now, comforted by the blare of trumpets welcoming us home.
glad to be there, alive, in one piece. Um, this is um, a poem that's uh, hopefully going to be in my new collection, which is working title is called Jubilee. And it's called War Rant, because like most of us, I'm finding, trying to find language to uh, express my rage at our current situation. And um, so I, I wrote this, and the great thing about this poem is that it appeared on a, an international website of uh, progressive anti-war poetry. So um, it got some very nice airing. It's called War Rant. Elena says she wants more passion. Andrea quit reading the morning news. Yvette sees the devil wears Prada twice. Her savior is in fashion. I check my emails, avoid overlong cues, and await my do daily dose of inspiration, wondering each day if I've paid enough dues. Adam watches the blogosphere for flash mobs, trends, and hot spots, and we all fret about the biosphere while white girls don't do much hip hop. But for me, I can't help it. Rhythm and words are my companions, true and loyal. So forgive me now if I don't exactly know how to do it. Just say it's a rant, peace and love style. I want to save the world, do it now, don't get caught by indecision, paralysis, missteps, or overwrought. But the world and I have conflicting views on how to end this madness, stop the bombing, end the wars. I cry, but no one listens to my news. My night times glisten with the sweat of murder, mayhem, and slaughter. I could just go over there, I think, land smack down on the pavement. I put on my white gloves, make a stink, shout, what a horror, while dancing on the griddle of hot sand and tar. There is no left, no right, no middle. Come on, stop the killing, and end the riddle. But I'd be dead before you could say red. And then I think, if not now, when? Wasn't it I who called myself a warrior? Every day new news arrives stinking, reeking with tragedies undrained. Tidal waves, heat waves, bodies downstream, a wave of bombings on an unsuspecting train. We seek for terror, but what about DC? We can't explain. I voted right, I mean left, is my persistent refrain. I took myself off the list of dinner parties where people complain of gas prices and fish prices and politics not spoken, because I'm getting sick of being powerless, feeling broken. So come on, people, do one thing today for peace. Save a, save a tree, save a child, sign a paper, beg for release of fighters and lovers for peaceniks and hippies. This battle of West meets East is not exactly what we ordered. And I think that this poem is a nice dialogue with Ian's um, wondering where he's going to be at the end. It's called Burial. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a happy burial poem, if you can believe it. You might imagine a box, airless, close, the sound of dirt clumps falling like rain. You might imagine a mudslide rushing down steep mountain terrain, your legs buckling. You might imagine a building shaken to its core, knocking you senseless. You might imagine water too deep, a collapsed bridge, a tunnel broken. My burial was none of these. An angel chanted, and I went under, alone and unafraid. Mm -hmm.